Hello, Scott. Thank you for being on the show today. Well, hello, Jericho. Thank you for having me. Sorry, I'm still dressing, you know. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I know you have a busy schedule, so I appreciate you coming on. Not that busy, but thank you. <clears throat> so, Scott, for those of everybody who doesn't know you... Um, probably everybody no a lot of people know you're very popular um let's just start in the beginning as far as where you grew up and and that okay that uh well i was born in chicago illinois but i've never really lived there as i mean as a coherent being um i think i left when i was a year or something or two um, and uh, not even two, I think it was like a year old or something. And uh, I've only been back there once uh, in a freezing snowstorm uh, and I don't intend to go back. Um, <clears throat> and then I, uh, I, well, I spent most of my, you know, small kid time in, uh, in uh, Hawaii uh, on Oahu. Um, and, uh, uh, and then I, when I was in like, uh, you know, 18-ish or whatever, um, I started living and working in LA and was there for 20 some odd years. We don't have to say exactly. <laughs> and, and, um, <clears throat> and then I was, well, long story, but I moved to Guam actually, uh, uh -huh. because I was trying to get back to, uh, Hawaii. And then, um, when I was, uh, in Guam, well, I, I went to Maui first, actually had, had a daughter there. Um, sorry, Donnie. No big deal. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, she was born at uh, Wailuku General, you know, and, sure. and um, <clears throat> lived there uh, for a few years, about three something years. And then uh, I was trying to get to back to Honolulu and, um, and I, I got this job in Guam. So I went there for a couple of years and then uh, I actually didn't have a job and just decided what the heck I don't want to stay in Guam because I'll, I'll be single my wife will definitely leave me yeah um, and and so I said let's just do Honolulu let's find some work and, and go there uh, and that's that's pretty much what we did uh, they went back to California for a couple of months I went straight to Honolulu um, and uh, found a job got lucky uh, working on a show called uh, was a Playboy show uh, Playboy Playboy Madison. yeah no way high. Yeah, and it played Waikiki down uh, at the uh, in a showroom at the Ilikai, um, <clears throat> and it didn't didn't go over huge, but um, uh, but it actually did start doing fairly well. And then there was some shenanigans behind the scene with some of the executives, and and the show just disappeared. But uh, I got lucky again, and I started working on uh, Baywatch uh, Hawaii. Um, I got, got a call from the executive, uh, co-executive producer, uh, Frank South. Yeah. Um, and uh, he interviewed me and like one other person. And I guess I got lucky and got it. And Wait, and wait, wait. Were you coaching on Baywatch? Or were you acting? I was the acting coach, yeah. Oh, okay. I was the, you know, the acting coach on the show. So okay. it was a full-time, every day on set. It's supposed to be 12 hours, but it's usually around 13, 14 hours a day. Sure. Um, and, uh, and time offset too. It was a ridiculous amount of time, but the job was like so great that <laughs> it, it was kind of like, oh, it's okay. I'm, I'm probably making like negative dollars an hour, <laughs> uh, but, but it's okay. Cause the job is so much fun. Yeah. Uh, and it, and it was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> so basically you're saying in most of your life, you've always just been trying to get back to Hawaii. That seems like the circular... <laughs> And, and here I am in Portland, Oregon, <laughs> and doing the same damn, I was going to come here for, honestly, for five years was my plan. Yeah. Um, and start up a, an acting studio, which now seems so, uh, I don't know, um, old fashioned, sure. um, quaint. Um, and, uh, but I did, I did that. And so I have a school going in Honolulu and a school going here in Portland um, but it's with the pandemic and with, with everything else, it's, it's become a, a bigger challenge than I had expected. Sure. Um, I mean, they're both schools are doing really well and I'm real happy with that, but my getting back is, um, has proved to be a little difficult, especially with the pandemic. Of that. course. I'm, well, uh, you know, let's, still let's, connected. Let's rewind back to before when you started 
in the industry. Um, did you do acting and things like that? Was that something in your family and then you got into coaching? Well, yes. So my, my dad, it's a weird, I don't know, way to get into coaching, I guess. But um, my dad was a, a theater producer, <clears throat> a very uh, prolific theater producer. He did some, I don't know, five to 700 uh, equity plays. Equity is the union for actors in, in theater. Um, and uh, he, to, to my knowledge, he never did a non-equity play. I think all of them were equity plays. And mm -hmm. Um, and like I say, just a ridiculous number. We can't even figure out. I have a listing of what we think is close, but it's hard to tell. Um, and then he did them multiple times and all that. So, so, and, and each one had a, like a, a celebrity of the day in it. Um, uh, people who now you might not know, but in the day, you know, Eddie <laughs> Grable was much. a huge name to have in a live show. Um, uh, but now I don't know that anyone even knows who Betty Grable was. Um, <laughs> that name sounds familiar to me. So Google it. Um, Google it. and <laughs> just, <laughs> but I mean, everybody you could imagine, you know, Lena Horne, but all these big, big names from then Tony Bennett did, did guys and dolls yeah. uh, for him, you know, and <laughs> things like that. Anyway, that was what I grew up in. Uh, and, uh, I worked backstage on all his shows I mean, when I was, you know, again, coherent. Um, uh, so from about age, well, I started, I did, a, I did the Munchkin and Wizard of Oz at age five. I think uh -huh. I um, and then, <laughs> but then I worked backstage and all that kind of stuff for him growing up. Uh, then I started working on my own in, uh, in high school, really, uh, in terms of acting. Mm -hmm. I booked a job on a TV show and... Um, uh, that, that got me into SAG, um, which was, I was pretty young. Um, I was a teenager, 15, I yeah, think. Yeah, so you've I'm, been in SAG pretty much your whole life. I've been in SAG, <laughs> I can't even say how many years, it's too embarrassing, but, it, well, 1975. Sure. Um, uh, so, yeah, before you were born. And, <laughs> and, it, and it was, um, I mean, it's been a really in interesting ride. I, I wanted to act. That was my thing while I was a teenager and mm -hmm. wanted to do that really badly. I took a job. Um, I dropped out of college, uh, took a job stage managing um, on, you know, road shows. Um, and I thought I'm going to be making 750 bucks a week. That was <laughs> the most money I had ever imagined making, you know, yeah. um, at that age. And in that time, it was pretty decent money, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so I thought college, shit, I'll just, I'll shoot, sorry. Uh, I'll just, uh, no, you can swear uh, on the journey. Oh, okay, good, good. I'm glad. Um, <laughs> cause I have a potty mouth. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, so, that, so, so I, I thought it was a good thing. I don't know that it was, but, um, because, you know, I, I didn't ask myself what, what happens when the show closes um, <laughs> and then you got to get another one. But I, I did, again, I was lucky. I, I stage managed, uh, for 10, 12 years, um, uh, in, in equity shows and, and, uh, cause that was my background with my dad, you know? Yeah. And, uh, from stage managing, it's a natural leap, especially in theater to go to directing. So when I was in my early twenties, I started doing that, uh, directing theater around LA, uh, starting in the, like the little 99 seat houses. Uh, they used to be called equity waiver theaters. Um, that doesn't exist anymore, but, uh, the, the houses are still there. The theaters are still there. And, and, uh, it, it's, small theater is a big thing in LA actually. Um, actors use it to showcase and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Um, so I, I directed that and then I moved up to equity shows. Um, I started to work in television, but I don't like directing in television. It's not in my skill set. It's not in my wheelhouse and it's not something I enjoy. Um, oh. uh, but I found that I liked working with actors. And so from my directing in theater, um, I started working with actors that wanted to work in TV and film and I started doing private coaching. And, and that was in 19, I don't know, maybe 80 something sure. 82 84 i don't know it was a while ago um and and um maybe maybe 87 maybe it was that late i, I forget but um i had directed lost in yonkers uh with jane meadows and and act, th that led to some coaching work and i think that's when i basically started so i could look it up um uh but uh uh and the coaching really just kind of rang a bell for me. Um, I, I felt really connected to it. I found that I could see things 
uh, quickly and help actors by suggesting things that were really simple that they could make those adjustments and um, and I communicated well with them. It, it was really the first thing that I just fell into that I just thought, oh my God, I can do no wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I felt that way at times, you know, like if, if I was a great swimmer and I, and, you know, jumped in the swimming and, and, and raced and I just felt like nobody could beat me. Um, that, that's the feeling that, that I, I have when I coach. I love doing it, uh, teaching, coaching. I love directing theater and, um, the pandemic has really stepped on that. Yeah, for uh, sure. Uh, but I had, hadn't directed anything anyway in a few years. So I'm really kind of jonesing to get back to doing at least one a year, you know, is really nice uh, to, to do. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I mean, I don't have to. It's the coaching that I do the most of. I coach actors on auditions. I teach, you know, a couple, three classes a week. Um, and, and yeah, and it tends to be good. So... <clears throat> You've coached me, and I would agree that you are very good at oh, communicating sweet. things in a way where it doesn't hurt anyone's feelings, and you're just very honest, and you're not too nice about it. So, yeah. I mean, I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've no, had teachers I, I, that were too nice, <laughs> and I've had teachers that uh, have, you know, made me feel awful. So, you, you write a very nice line, Scott. I'm going to give you yeah. that compliment that... Okay. I'm yeah, glad. I feel like I, I've learned a lot just from I don't I don't think there's ever a reason. I mean, I see directors do it sometimes, but yeah. to, even I've seen acting coaches do it and I don't understand it why people would go to them. They berate them. They they yeah. they're, they get mad at them like or something and I'm just like what why, you know? I don't right. I don't get that that whole mindset. So I don't have that issue fortunately. Um, I definitely don't have the too nice issue and I've seen that. <laughs> and I think, I think <laughs> while I think it can be not constructive, um, I don't think it's ever destructive uh, when people are too nice. And even though I'm not that, um, uh, I have sent people to teachers that I believe are too nice. Yeah. I've referred people who I think need more of a, a self-esteem boosting kind of a thing. Exactly. And, and that's not really what I do. Cause you know, it's like I say to actors when they come into my class at the first, I, I I'm trained and paid normally and wired to look for what's wrong in a performance and fix that. I, what I lack is uh, sometimes positive reinforcement. And, and, and I think it's kind of a, a hazard of my work is uh, I completely focus on, oh, wait, that wasn't truthful. Sure. And yet when something really good happens or, or you know, creative or natural or whatever, um, I just kind of like let that go because I'm looking for what's not right. And, and I work on that. That's my challenge. And I, and I do. But I would have to honestly say I still suck at it. And, <laughs> and, and so... So my feedback consequently is, this is what you're doing wrong. This is what you're doing wrong. This is what you got to do to fix it, sure. which is constructive. But like I say, if you're someone that is really, really like, I don't, you know, down on yourself, um, then yeah, you might need a little bit. And like I say, I've, I've done that a couple of times. I, I do know of uh, teachers that I think are that way. And Right. They're like, but I think it's sometimes to the detriment if the, they're not doing a good job and you're not telling them, you know what I mean? It's uh, and totally, and, totally. and like I say, I, I think, I think that, that with those people that I, that like that I would refer to them, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say to them, Oh, you should train with this person forever. I would say, you know, you should start with this person and see how you feel about it. Most of the time, I think, at least what I hear from people coming to me is that, you know, oh, this person was so positive on everything. I really want to hear the truth. I really want to hear the truth. Yeah. I get asked that a lot <laughs> by new students that come to me a lot. I mean, that's something that I think I'm actually pretty good at mm -hmm. that, that I, that I do, but, um, and I think that they hear that and that's why they come to me. But, but at the same time, it's something that they're coming to me for that they're, they're wanting, they're, they're, you know, um, uh, craving, I think, in some cases. And so I think they get sick of someone that's just always, oh my God, you were wonderful. You know, <laughs> eventually I think that gets old. And, and yeah. uh, so I think, but sometimes, sometimes people need to start there. So. Yeah. I think uh, for me, as far as acting, I had such low self-esteem when I started that it was a real mind fuck. I had to get around 
myself and like going to the bad place of I suck and like I'm not good. And once I was able to get a handle on that, then things started flowing much better. So it is really like a testament of doing your work so that you can actually receive con constructive criticism. Yeah, and, 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 and I'm, I'm big on that. I think it's, yeah. it's really important. First thing I do after someone does a scene in my classes, um, is, the first question I ask virtually every time is, how did that go for you? Because actors a lot of times see what you, you're saying is really good that you do that, um, but a lot of actors don't. They think that they just get lost in the role and that's a good thing, but then when it's done, they can't look back and know how they did. They have no idea. Right. And so I do work on trying to help them read their, what I call their internal barometer. Uh, and no, not during the scene. So they're not thinking about it while they're acting, but afterwards to be able to go back and say, okay, is my heart beating faster? Is, you know, what's going on? And how did that feel for me, you know, compared to other times that I've run it? And, and um, if you do that already, that's a really good thing because a lot of actors have trouble with that. Well, it's taken me... 10 years now. <laughs> yeah. well, and, and I know, I mean, people laugh at that, but I mean, it's, uh, Sandy Meisner said when he was asked, how long does it take to master the Meisner technique? And he said, 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Which now I, I have a black belt, which probably doesn't fit me anymore, but um, uh, you know, it's the same kind of a thing. You know, it, t you don't earn that in a year or two. You, you, you have to really, focus on something and even then you get a, a black belt it's called a first don to get a second don a second a stripe it's it's like doing the whole thing again from white belt to black belt i mean it's it's uh really really huge and and so people that you meet like i have a good friend that's an eighth degree i think he's eighth or ninth degree black belt and i, mean, I can't even fathom that it's right. just so far beyond. Yeah, what you know, what I I could see myself doing, you know. And he's he's as older older than me. I'm not sure exactly, but he's about my age, and he can still kick way over his head. Just yeah, I'm just like wow. You know? <laughs> I mean, I know it looks like I'm so young because my beard is dark, but it's not really dark. So. You are young. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so I have a question for you as far as. Um acting goes because I had Wendy Parr on my last episode and she said she's a, a singing coach um, among other things but she said anybody can sing and I was like mm, I don't think so like there are terrible singers right do you feel that have you ever do you think there's bad <laughs> people that are bad at acting have you ever told someone like you know what <clears throat> don't pursue this as a real thing you know that's, what that's I mean? funny I do, yeah i do i know exactly what you mean i've been asked it before and and um and I, i'll tell you what i the way i see it first of all taste especially with acting less so with with singing is subjective right i mean you can hit a wrong note <laughs> and i don't think that's subjective i think that's right. fairly objective but then there's other things that are subjective the quality of the voice and you know things like that and 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 um and with acting i think more of it is subjective so right off the top, you know, it's risky to say to someone, you don't have what it takes. And I think anybody that would say something like that is, mm -hmm. is arrogant. And that's, there's no place for that. Um, um, even though it exists, there's no place for it. Um, so what I tell actors when they come to train with me is not that I can make you great. Because I, I, that would be silly. Yeah. But I can make you better. Mm-hmm. And I promise them that. And if they feel like they're not getting better at any time, they can come to me and tell me and I'll give them a refund and we'll go our merry way and, and, and no, no problem. Because it, it, you know, if I can't do that, then, <laughs> then they shouldn't be taking class with me and, and you know, they, they should be on their way. And, and, uh, but, but I don't believe that's the case. In 99.99% .99 of the people, uh, I can make them better and I do. Mm -hmm. Now, how far that they, how much better, how far they can go with that, it just depends. They, and yeah, sure, they all start in different places. But I got to say, there's people that have come to me that, that, um, that I, just, I just thought, oh, dear. Oh, <laughs> oh, mommy told you you were something and she was lying, you know. No gold star um, for you. I know, I know. And, and sure, that goes through my head sometimes. But, sure. but then... I get surprised. Yeah. I get really surprised. They put in some 
terrible work, you know, and then, and they keep doing that. And then all of a sudden they'll have a breakthrough. Everybody does. Yeah. And, and, and I suddenly they, they move forward like a quantum leap and maybe they're still not going to work as a professional actor, you know, maybe, mm -hmm. um, but, but they've, they've gotten like a whole lot better and they have a much better understanding of what they were doing wrong and what acting really is and all that kind of stuff. So I just think everybody makes strides and that's all I focus on is trying to help them make those strides. It takes them wherever it takes them, you know? Right. Well, you know what I found interesting in class was um, just watching you make a subtle suggestion to someone and then it changes the whole feeling of it and i'm not going to say who actually don't remember his name but there was this kid Better that was doing a um he was doing a chasing amy monologue i think but you got him into the emotion and i heard his voice crack and I, it made me emotional because i was like oh there he is like it lit up the whole room and i just i think that's the most amazing thing about acting is like you can have a breakthrough at any moment and transition into this other and place. And can you imagine being the person that said, just do this differently. And yeah. then you watch it again and it's just like, bam, right? It just works. And, and, and I'm sitting there going, oh my God, I, I, this is the best job in the world. It's just so cool. Because I mean, it, it, it is, you know, it really is. It's just uh, uh, amazing how simple a lot of times the adjustments are, you mm -hmm. know? Like I'll tell someone, I noticed that right before these big emotional points, you look down for a second. And it, what that does is it breaks your emotion and then you're not feeling the emotion as fully. And so then we don't feel the emotion as fully. And it's all because you, you're, it's a self-defense thing. Right. It's like this, this subconscious thing of I'm going to hold myself together, I'm not going to cry, which we all have. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so when you're in a scene, even though you want to cry in the scene, you're looking at the person and your, your subconscious makes you do that. And then I take that away. I say, make sure you don't look down at that point. And that's the only adjustment I make. And then all of a sudden they're locked in and just boom, the, you know, it just flows. And so, yeah, a lot of times it's, it's very simple little adjustments that can make a huge difference. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I'll just quick one on, on set story real quick. Um, uh, I, I was with, uh, I don't remember the actress, it might've been Shannon Doherty, um, um, but, but it, it, whoever it was, uh, th they were having some trouble and they weren't, weren't it, it wasn't there, the, the emotion wasn't there. And uh, the director, you know, looked at me and do something. So I, I went in, uh, in between takes and it's the close up on, on her and it wasn't Shannon, sorry, I'll take that back. Uh, <laughs> It was something. Not else. <laughs> um, no. um, but uh, uh, so so I, I I went in and I and I whispered to somebody. I mean, I whispered to her uh, something, and then I, I went back out, and the director said action, and they did it again, and it was really really good. Mm -hmm. And everybody on set is is you know coming up to me. What did you say? What did you say to her? That was really cool. What did you say? What did you... And I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't discuss it. It's, it you know, and you probably <laughs> would understand anyway. You know, all I said was, you're not looking him in the eye. Uh, that was it. That was yeah. literally all I said. I said, just keep your eyes nailed on him. Mm -hmm. Stop dodging it. And she did, and it was just so powerful. And you just saw the, you know, just the the emotion. And and so, you know, yeah. But it it was, it was nothing brilliant. It was, you know, look him in the eye. Yeah. It's, it's pretty standard. It's you know, pretty standard acting coach fare. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, well, as long as you don't tell everybody, then they don't know. That's right. <laughs> what would you describe? as what what would you describe your style as as far as like you know how many different everyone's like i'm a i'm a method teacher i'm a what whatever right i mean i think okay yeah yeah it's interesting i've never considered um uh but i mean i i teach method i teach meisner uh mm -hmm. i teach some Chekhov uh and, and and others that you probably haven't heard of um but i and so what i would say is i'm a practical acting coach i work with I, probably because I coach and, and I didn't just come out of teaching or acting. Like if I had trained in method and then I would go and teach method, right? Um, I did try train in method, actually. That was a technique that I actually formally trained in. Um, thank you, Delia Salvi, uh, who I hated because she made me do those damn sense memory exercises. Oh, so they're much. the worst. Uh, <laughs> uh, and now I make people do that. And, and I have they're to still the worst. No. 
<laughs> and I have to apologize to Delia Salvi. Uh, may she rest in peace. Because uh, I hate, oh man, hated that. But anyway, the point is, um, I had to work on set with a lot of different uh, actors. Uh, I mean, actors from a lot of different styles. They, you know, they were trained by Uta Hagen or Stella Adler or whoever. And and so, you know, you, if they're trained by, you know, uh, uh, Meisner, uh, giving them notes uh, that meth that that Strasberg would have given as a method actor, uh, that that would not work. You know? Right, exactly. So I had to be able to speak their language and and say to a Meisner actor, you know, what's your emotional preparation? Can we can we you know tweak it a little bit? Blah blah blah, and use terms that they understand, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and so I, what I found though was that all these techniques, they all have brilliance in them, and 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 they all have inherent weaknesses in them. And this may sound arrogant, but they, they do. And, and so, you know, one of the things people complain about with method acting a lot is that the other, the method actor disconnects from the scene, from the, the imaginary circumstances, because they're going back to some memory or some whatever, right. right? Right before they have this big emotional thing. And then they're brilliant in their emotional thing, but you're acting with them and you're trying to get connected to them. And if you're a Meisner actor, you're just like ready to kill them because they're not there. They're not in their eyes, you know? <laughs> And so, yeah. and, and so, so a method actor is frustrating for people to work with in certain situations. But then again, when you're working in film uh, and you're shooting a close up and you can't even be looking at the other actor, you have to just have a piece of tape on a C stand or whatever, right? Yeah. That, that's your eye line because that's where the actor would be standing and you'd be looking, right? So you're playing off of, and, and sorry, most people, that know Meisner know that it's entirely a technique based on playing off of the other person. Yeah. So yeah. if that's what you're trained in and you're playing off of a piece of tape, right? <laughs> I mean, you're recalling the actor that you worked with in the previous shots, so you know what he did, but still, he's not there in the moment. You're working with a piece of tape. And that is really difficult. And I've seen Meisner actors have a real hard time with that because their training is all about reacting in the moment each time, fresh. Yeah. To the, and, and they're not getting anything in this moment, but tape, <laughs> that's it, and it's flat. So, so consequently method where they're entirely in their head in that situation is a huge benefit. Mm -hmm. You don't need anybody with method. You, you work entirely off of your imagination and there is no need for other people, which like I say, sometimes is not good, but in film, it can be very good. And, right. and so my, my classes, we work on both. Meisner for working off of other actors and method for being self-sufficient and not having to depend on other actors. Right. Well, I think it's, yeah. it's good to um, do both for that very reason. It's kind of like, um, it's like the wine mixed plate, right? It's like, <laughs> you, have a, you have a little bit of everything. Yeah, so sure, you're pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> Yeah, and for those who don't know, I mean, someone that is listening to this that is not an actor, there's basically two, how many main, what um, would you say, four, no, five? They, well, let, I'll give you a quick primer, okay? Okay, okay. And I'll try and make it fast. Uh, so there's this guy, Stanislavski, okay? Stanislavski was, as you may have guessed, a Russian. and But don't hold that against him. Uh, what he did was essentially he made... Uh, Acting, he took acting from being, being a presentational art form to being an experiential art form where, where it was actually not a bad thing to, in Stanislavski's school to feel the emotion. Before that, it was felt that actors that felt emotion were bad actors. And the reason mm -hmm. was because they couldn't convey it 200 feet to the back of a huge auditorium or whatever. Right. Yep. And so acting styles were very big and grand and and emotion would get in the way. It would cloud up your throat. It would you wouldn't be able to get it out. Stanislavski started working on actually feeling emotion and, and trying to recreate inspiration was what got him into teaching. And uh, how, how do you give an inspired performance and then do it again and again? And so that's what he started focusing on. And without knowing it, because he was trying to do a technique for theater, but without knowing it, he was creating the killer technique for film. And, and but it, that didn't even exist really at, at the time, not, not as a serious anything. Right. Um, and so anyway, Stanislavski, then we had, after him, we had in America, 
some teachers that took his work and interpreted it. They didn't necessarily study with him, but they read his work and they learned from some of his students that came and, and taught, um, Boleslavsky and a few others. And, and so you had um, Method, which is uh, Lee Strasberg's technique, you had Meisner, Sandy, well, actually, let's go this way. Method, you had Stella Adler, yep. you had Uta Hagen uh, and Herbert Berghoff and, and um, Sonia Moore and, and Sanford Meisner. And the reason I say that is because I think the opposites on that scale are Meisner and Strasberg. So mm -hmm. Method and Meisner are the two techniques that, even though they're based in Stanislavski, they're really polar opposites, which is kind of fascinating. Right. Because they, they really are just taking Stanislavski's work and interpreting it in their way. And, and that changed it so much that those two techniques are just completely the opposite. And because they're so opposite, that's why I teach both of them, is because they complement each other so well. Each one, the weaknesses of one are the strengths of the other, literally. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really focus on those. Like I say, there's a few other teachers that I have that have tools and exercises that I think are great for working on camera. So I use those too. But as far as main techniques, I use those two mostly. Yeah. Long answer. Sorry. No, it's good because I feel like a lot of people don't know where where it comes from or they're like what is like the method they just think of daniel day lewis or something I know, and I know. Doing really and it, crazy you know, like <laughs> every time i have a new student in class if we're working on method uh because we do it in blocks right? right and so if we're in a method block um i'll ask them and i do this on set right with experienced actors from la working mm -hmm. actors and they'll they'll use the term that's when i do it to them they'll say oh that was very method and i'll go <laughs> What does that really mean? I'm just curious. Yeah. And and they're like, what? And I'm, what 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 is method exactly? And I'll hear all these different answers. All right. And I love this to this question because I'll hear the the most common one is like you mentioned comes from someone like Daniel Day Lewis, and they'll say, well, it's when you live the life of the character off camera, and and you just always you know he was always Abraham Lincoln, right? Yeah. And yeah. and no, <laughs> no. Um, that's not method. It's just not. And, and Daniel Day-Lewis, yes, is a method actor. So it's confusing and I understand why. Yeah. But Daniel Day-Lewis does the whole living the character's life off camera. That helps him. I'm not going to criticize him. He's a he, you know, brilliant actor. It yeah. works for him. That's great. Um, but that's not part of method. Right. And so most of the time they'll say that or they'll say method acting is when you get, you know, when you feel real emotional. And I'm like, don't you feel real emotional with other techniques? Sure. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, method is very simply, in a nutshell, the technique taught by Lee Strasberg. Yeah. Period. It was his technique. It's based in Stanislavski, like I said. And, and you know, that's what method is. And it, there's certain things that, tools that it uses, right? Sense memory is a big one. The, the, that is um, uh, fooling your senses, imagining that you are having a cup of coffee to the point where you feel the weight of the cup in your hand, you feel the heat of the coffee on the back of your finger and the steam rising and, and you have, and, and you do it while you're obviously not holding a cup of coffee. And then you do it with a real cup and you see, oh yeah, that was way hotter. Oh, oh and it's heavier too. Okay. And then you go back and do it imaginarily. And and you know, and you're you're trying to feel that extra weight and feel the steam as much as you can. And what happens is you you just by doing it, you get better at it. Yeah. And pretty soon you you actually do smell coffee, even though there's no coffee in the air. And right. and when that starts happening, then uh, we'll just say that's a way of accessing memories and things and feeling triggering a, a very full emotion. Um, and so, you know, people think, oh, you just think of a memory, you know, sad memory and you cry, but that's not how method works. It, right. It, you use a sad memory and it makes you cry, but thinking about the memory isn't what gets you there. And so I won't go into it any deeper, but it, it does, it, it, it's a full fledged technique and it, and it works. Actors today in film and television use mostly and I think this is what you were getting at before, mostly Method and Meisner. Mm -hmm. Those are the two techniques that you'll see the most in, in Hollywood and, and in film, across the, the world, really, um, right. uh, much of the world. Uh, and, and, and so, yeah, that's, that's the techniques that work. And 
I don't think a lot of people know this, but most of the famous actors from like 60s, 70s, all, wait, 50s, 60s, 70s, um, they were all studying with all of them, like Dustin Hoffman. I mean, there's so many where they have great stories if you ever like without a doubt bio or anything like that um, yeah it's pretty without cool. a doubt they train with them and and they still train with them i mean a lot of these people have coaches their own coaches like i'll work for a production company usually but a lot of times a star will come on and they have their own coach mm -hmm. that they always work with nobody knows about that they don't advertise it they don't you know but but smart actors you know it's funny because when i'm on a show and we get guest stars that are like successful actors mm -hmm. um they always want to run lines. They always want to work with me. And then yeah. they don't know me. It's not because they think I'm good or whatever, because they don't know anything about me, but they crave it. They want to work. And so right. they'll say, Oh, are you available? Can can you swing by my trailer and yada, yada, yada. And I, and you know, and then we do and we work and they always, they're just hungry for direction. And you know, in TV and especially TV, but also film directors don't coach. They don't direct actors. Right. That's really not what their job is. Their job is to capture it, right? Mm -hmm. That's their job. And many have never taken an acting class or uh, you know, anything like that. And so they have a hard time. That's why I get hired on set is because they, they don't really communicate well. There's certain things you don't say to an actor, even if that's what you want or think you want, you know? <laughs> and, and so they'll say something, you know, like, they'll give them a line reading, you know? Right. Can you say it like this? I love you, you know, or something like that. <laughs> and that's like a, that's an insult to an actor. Any, right. any competent actor, you do that to it. And they're, they're, you know, <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> and it's hard because they, in television, especially directors uh, come out of jo jobs you probably wouldn't expect. Most people wouldn't expect. Um, um, and, and like a dolly grip, right? That's a very popular job for uh, building a director. Oh, really? People, That's like a transition? Uh, Interesting. It's, it's, I didn't no, know it's that. a training ground. Think about it. Well, editors too sometimes, but, yeah. but Dolly Grips, their job is, for those that don't know, basically you're pushing and pulling a wagon around right. and occasionally operating a jib, but, but what you're doing is you're moving the camera and you're learning all about how the camera moves uh, when it captures scenes. And that's 90% of directing, yeah. right? The actors are getting paid a thousand bucks a day. They're supposed to know how to do their job. So, you know, the, consequently, directors tend, unless they came out of acting, and that happens sometimes, but, mm -hmm. but they tend to not look forward to directing actors or to talking to actors. <laughs> I mean, I, I was saying this the other night. I had, I had one director on, on uh, whatever show it was ever yet, but um, he came on for the week to do the episode, 10 days, whatever. And so I'm working all season on the show and, and this is just a, another director in. So I have a little bit more permanence and I know the people better and that. And he came up to me the first day and he said, look, you gotta, you gotta help me. I don't like talking to talent, okay? And not, not, he was just really gruff, you know? Right. He wasn't a bad guy, he was actually a really nice guy. But he, I, think, I think he had like a fear, you know, of, of not knowing how to say what he wanted and not getting what he wanted. And so he would avoid it and he would just look over at me and give me the, 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 the head nod and, and I would go in every time. I never worked as hard as I did on that episode. Um, but he gave me a case of Cuban cigars at the end of the- Well, the, that's very nice. The day, so I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll bend over backwards for the guy, you know? Uh, <laughs> but he was a dolly grip, uh, yeah. you know, 30 years before. Mm -hmm. Now, now he's, he's probably done, you know, 5,000 hours of episodic television. I think that that's talking. cool. Like, um, I don't, I don't think a lot of people think about that, but it's like, oh, I want to be a director. I want to be an actor. I want to be whatever. Um, I started out just being an extra on stuff and trying to figure out how it all worked before I even tried to do anything else because I kind of thought of it as like working in a restaurant where you start at the bottom right and then you you make your way up to whatever head chef or something like that if it's I mean, meant to be yeah yeah but yeah some people some people just keep busting, Being an extra. Busting tables. Yeah, <laughs> right? and that's it I'm just saying and, <laughs> yeah but I mean it's true right they, they, they and, and I find it's a mindset more than anything else that yeah. all all background all extras uh, would love to have a speaking part. I mean, yeah. I think that in general, there may be an exception somewhere, but in general, they, and many I've found 
believe that they're due a speaking part because they've been doing extra work for so long and they spend right. so much time on set and they know everybody. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that it is an, an acquired skill and, and, and you have to learn how to do it. And, and while some people are naturally better at it than others, there's always things that people need to do to get better at acting on camera. Um, it, it just, there's just too many things to know. There's too, there's too many little technical you know, things. And, and so, you know, they have to learn and most of them don't, some of them do, they mm -hmm. train. Right. And so, and I know this because I get to train them. Right. And, and right. so when that, when that happens, I mean, I see the difference, right. We just posted today about Valen Alo. I don't know if you know Valen, but he, he had just, just did the lead in the Hallmark movie that was shooting. Oh, cool. Okay. He just did the lead. <laughs> so I'm, I, that doesn't really happen much no. where a, 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 pro, a project comes from Hollywood to shoot in the islands and they cast a local actor in a leading role. They'll cast them as a speaking part in sure. something. Sure. But not, he was number four, I think lead, That's so uh, cool. which is awesome. Right. And, but, but that's the kind of, that's, he's done plenty of extra work. Right. But, yeah. but he also trained and, yeah. and then th that's what happened. Another one real quick one uh, from Maui. She still lives on Maui full time. Danielle Delaney, she she um, booked because I can say this now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she booked uh, that. Uh, I know what you did last summer. Yeah. Right. The series based the on the, the the horror film. Yeah. And so it's a brand new Amazon series, and she booked a um, recurring role. That's awesome. Which again, is just doesn't happen, you know, in local areas and smaller markets. Do you so, think that um, that's happening because of COVID and things are more readily open to locals as far as the Hawaii market or what do you think is going on with so, that? So I think that that certainly has, plays a part uh, that, that um, we're getting auditions that we wouldn't normally get in mm -hmm. Hawaii. But uh, at the same time, we've had, I mean, Dennis Chun is an old student of mine, and he was for years now a, a series regular on Hawaii Five-0, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it didn't start that way. It started with, I coached him on it. It was a, a co-star, one episode. Mm -hmm. That was it. He just played this cop. I don't even think his name was Duke. <laughs> it was <just> a cop. <laughs> and, then, and then they asked him to come back. And I said, that means you're recurring. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're a cop again. You're the same one. Then they gave him a name. Then they made him, made him officially recurring where he had at least 10 episodes a year. And then for the last, I don't know, four or five years, um, he's, he's had like 17, 18 episodes a year. Yeah. Um, really I'm sorry, but that's story. awesome. <laughs> well, awesome, right? Do you th well, I've talked about this with Cody. He was on, and we were talking about tackling the small market first before let's say you go to LA to be a famous actor um do you think that that's the best course of action as far as if someone's just starting out or something like that is obviously we live in Hawaii so we have access to roles that maybe other people don't that live in I don't know Ohio or something like that but well, I mean, like I'm in Portland right now but it's the same deal I mean the show right. to shoot here the people that I train here book the same kinds of roles as the people I train in Hawaii, yeah. right? co-starring mostly on television stuff, uh, and then once in a blue moon a guest star, um, and 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 the same thing for films. They'll they'll get small speaking part on a film um, that's shooting up there, you know, from L.A. Uh, and, and so that that works in all a lot of markets across the country uh, that way. But it's very limited as to what they cast. Even Atlanta, everybody talks about Atlanta. Oh, yeah. gonna Atlanta, I'm going to move yeah. to Atlanta and be a star. <laughs> Yeah, they still cast all the big roles in LA. It's true. They it's don't true. cast any of those in, in Atlanta. So, yeah. so they're reading for the same size roles in Atlanta that actors here are reading for and actors in Honolulu are reading for. And Basically the same roles. Yeah. But more stuff shoots in Atlanta because yeah. of their tax incentives. So there are more of them, of those roles. And that part's true. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not the place to go if you want to book the larger roles. And so as to what Cody or whoever said, um, I, I think if you're already in a smaller market, sure, it's great to get experience before. And there's other reasons too, that, and things you can get before going to LA. 
What I don't necessarily recommend, and I've had people do, uh, literally follow me and I feel bad, but um, I don't think you should go from one smaller market to another small market in an effort to gain experience you know, before going to LA. I think you should right. stay where you are. <laughs> I'm just saying. Because it'll and, be the same, right? And, right, that's yeah. my point. And get experience where you are. Thing about Hawaii that's good is, is we're a background zone. And what that means is, uh, with regard to the union, SAG-AFTRA, um, they have to use union extras. So if they have 120 extras or 110 extras in a day, right, they have to have, and I don't know the number, so, so I'm just saying as an example, not okay. the exact numbers. Hypothetical. 10 or 20, let's say, mm -hmm. have to be union, okay? And then the rest can be non-union. Um, but that's a really good way for people. That's how you get vouchers. That's how you join is they couldn't find enough union extras. So they have to give union vouchers to non-union people and they pay them more and they get a union voucher. You get three of those, you're eligible to join. So if you join in Hawaii, you pay, again, I'm not quoting exact numbers, right? You pay like <laughs> half the national rate, something like 1600 bucks or something. Yep. Okay. Um, and, and the national rates like 3000 something. So you get in much cheaper that way. Uh, Portland, I think, is the cheapest uh, in the country. I think it's like 900. Oh, dang, that's cheap. Which is, but it's also reflective of how much work is in the market. Mm -hmm. Okay, they get a discounted rate because there's not an opportunity to work as much. And that makes sense. If you move to LA and work, keywords and work in LA, you have to pay the difference. So if you paid 1500 and it's 3000 in LA, then when you go to LA and you book a job, you're gonna to have to pay what's called a step-up fee because you're competing with other actors that have to pay 3000. It's only fair, I see. right? Okay. But you've gotten to break it up into two payments, which makes it easier, mm -hmm. right? And those payments you can make, you can get a loan on too uh, uh, through the SAG after credit union. So there's really, really low interest. So I'm just saying they make it as easy as they can for you to join, but it, it's not a cheap, union to join. Like I said earlier, you know, if you're making a thousand dollars a day of work, then yeah, it doesn't really seem like it's really that much, right? It's right. three days work to join. Um, and if you're, and, and you know, you, you don't have to join, you're in your first job, so you can decide if it's the kind of work you want to do. That's, that's called a Taft-Hartley. Um, but anyway, uh, Hawaii has that. So you can, if you're just starting out, you can get your union status kind of easier there. Like you can't get extra jobs in Portland and join the union from it because they're not union. Right. Everything's non-union. Well, the extras are. Yeah. 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 I gotcha. Yeah. Um, exactly. You know what I realized when I went to LA <laughs> last year before the pandemic hit, I think I was there almost eight months and I was working non-union. I signed with an agency in LA and I booked so much work and I was like, I'm going to start making, I, no, the, <laughs> you do not make money doing commercial work, non-union. I mean, I would get like one small check, what we'll say a couple of thousand dollars, something like that. Yeah. And then they're like, when it airs, then we'll send you another check. So I did not get paid for nine commercials until mid pandemic. So I just even got How a check get, the other day. You got it residual? You get like what they do is they'll give you like a flat rate, right? And oh, then when keep it airs, it. then oh. you get you get an additional check. Oh, okay. it, yeah. So, but you have to advocate for yourself because one of them I didn't even know went to air, and someone was like, "I saw him in a commercial," point. and I'm like, There's, "Yeah, that's the point, <laughs> is that non-union? You don't have it's the Wild West. You don't have any exactly. protections at all." And yeah, and, yeah, and people will come to me and they'll say, "Look at this! I got this great lead in this commercial." campaign we're going to do you know four commercials i'm going to be making twenty two thousand dollars and you're like wow that's great non-union yeah. that's amazing let yeah. me just sit down and look and see what would it have been if it was union and you right. figure it out and it's something like a hundred and eighty thousand <laughs> it's a big difference <laughs> you know yeah twenty two thousand seems like a hell of a lot i understand yeah. but yeah. it's not you know yeah. when you when you really sit down and look at it if for a series of commercials you know, yeah, it's always going to be much, much more uh, yeah. for the union ones. So, yeah, but but commercials are, are tough because there's a lot of non-union commercials. There's so um, many, yeah. So you I can mean, just work. Is, well, they don't, 
<laughs> they've gotten to the point where special effects and things are so inexpensive mm -hmm. that that they can do what they call supers, which are things flying across the screen and words and 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 all kinds of stuff, bringing animated you know things to life and all that kind of stuff. That takes like one person in a studio doing it, right? And yeah. not a whole crew and and paying actors and residuals and such. So they're finding much less expensive ways to do things. And they can take a family like, like you would be perfect, you know, um, just, be, you know, you'd be the, the, the young mom or whatever. And, and they would have you just, they'd have just shots video of you having a picnic say, mm -hmm. and it's for a grocery store chain or whatever. And, and all, you know, you're not acting per se, you're, you're having a picnic and less smiling and laughing with the kids and yada, yada, and playing with the dog. And they, they cut it all together and make it into a commercial. And so that's what's happening, I think, is those are the kinds of the commercials that are, that are taking over and they're not hiring people to actually portray <laughs> um, characters. So yeah, but uh, the union has been working pretty hard on uh, finding ways around that, finding ways to get their members hired and get commercials to go union. We, we had seen a huge dive in the number of union commercials and it's actually coming back up now. So, um, and, and revenue is, is increasing too, because we've got better deals online and things like that. So I, I think we're moving in the right direction now, mm -hmm. but uh, commercials has been the, the real downfall, I think, for the last five to seven years. Yeah, of the, of the union. Yeah, no, I mean it, it has. I mean yeah. anyone saying otherwise is uh, is is just dead wrong. <laughs> you can't lie about that. It's just not the case. So yeah, so but it is it hopefully turned around and moving. It, it is moving in the right direction. If it keeps doing that, we'll be good. Yes, so I'm hopeful. Hope. Okay, Scott, I want to move on to this because I think it's really important. Um, uh, how are we going to do this in a short amount of time? Okay, um, I'll talk fast. <laughs> I always ask, you know, what advice would you give to someone that's just wants to get into the industry for acting? At the same time, I also want to cover how to avoid scams, what to look out for, because there's so much shit out there that is, I cannot believe. I see. Really and great. Like, no. Really great. No, great that you brought that up. Um, so, so uh, I, I mean, I would encourage anybody that really feels a passion for acting uh, to pursue it, but um, you can't buy a job ever. And if it's if it costs money, I would be really, really careful and uh, reticent to get involved in it. Um, you cannot pay to get an audition. It's you may you may be told that you can, but you can't. And you will pay money, and you'll do some contest, and they'll give you lots of awards and say how wonderful you are, and you get a pretty ribbon. Uh, and and you know they'll say, oh, you got all these callbacks, you know, for these big agencies. And and you you go and look at who these people are, and half the time there are secretaries that happen to work at that agency. They have nothing to do with bringing actors in, right. or they're simply agents that are frankly lacking ethics. And so they take money to go to these, you know, contests, if you will, or hold workshops where, sorry, but, <coughs> excuse me, casting directors um, that, you know, if a casting director wants to teach a class, like an ongoing class or a, a you know, six week workshop where they work with the actors, mm -hmm. first of all, they don't, because generally speaking, they've never trained in acting, so they couldn't, literally. But if they wanted to, I don't fault them for that. But the workshops that they do a lot are, and they're getting to be harder because we get laws passed to stop them. Um, but they're they're essentially glorified paid auditions. That's all. Right. Nobody that goes to one thinks they're learning anything or goes to it with the intention of learning anything. They do. They go to it with the intention of what they call access, which means you <laughs> an audition. You know, you want them to see your work and hire you, and that should not cost you. And so I find those people to be abhorrent and, and unethical, and they shouldn't be casting because uh, they're doing a disservice. Um, so don't pay for things like that, because I don't think they take you seriously anyway. You know, right. if you've got to pay for an audition, what does that say about you as an actor? It certainly doesn't impress a casting director, you know? They're going to cast someone once in a while because they have to. It keeps people going and coming to them. But... Um, yeah, watch for, uh, for those kinds of things, the competitions and the, the casting workshops. Separate training from work, right? Find a good teacher, find a good teacher that 
that speaks to you, that you feel like you get better every session. If you don't, find a new teacher. But right. find that teacher that, that makes you feel like you're getting better, like you're learning, um, and stick with them. Grasp them to your soul with, with hoops of steel, <laughs> uh, in, in the words of Shakespeare. Um, and, and, but, but do, because it's a value that, that I think is important in this industry. Um, but then for the work thing, you need an agent, you need a legitimate agent that, that is going to represent you and, and, and send you on auditions and get excited about your work. And then, sorry, last thing, keep your agent excited about your work. Yes. That's a, a thing that actors, I always say this in class. I'm like, you know, when's the last time your agent saw your, the, your capable, what you're capable of mm -hmm. as far as work goes? When's the last time you, they saw your work? And I get people that are like, I, I had one point girl that said, I've never met my agent. In person. <laughs> <laughs> well, how can you expect? And then they're like complaining. Oh, they never send me out. They never send me out. Well, why would right. they? They don't even know you. So, so the, the, the business is in your hands, right? Yeah, you market yeah. yourself, you stay on it and that, but watch out for scams and, and that. There are a lot of them. Uh, Jericho is 110% uh, right. Uh, and and they, they, they prey on your love of your children, especially, right? Because yes. they're like, oh, did they, 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 they mentioned the magic words, Disney, Nickelodeon, blah, blah, blah. And, and then just because they said that, you know, you think your kid's going to get on it. And then they're like, they, they go through a thing and they say, oh, your kid's great. We really want to represent them. And, and are you ready to get them pictures for $2,000? Exactly. And, and you, well, you, don't, you don't want to support your child in their dream? I mean, <laughs> you know, and, they, and it's just terrible, but it is. But that's what they do anyway. You I know what? I, <laughs> I actually, real fast, I actually You're went fine. to one of those on Oahu when I first got there, I didn't know. I just saw like, oh, casting for Disney, Nickelodeon, some shit. Right. Yeah, that's what they so do. It was at this big hotel. There, were, there was this huge <laughs> line and I was like, what the hell is this? And I'm like, I'm just going to hang out and see what happens. And I went as basically I was like, I'm a journalist at this point because I want to see what goes down here. And it was a full on manipulation. Like they show this movie about who's become famous through this thing. And then they have the kids go up and audition. And then they'll say, oh, you just have to pay to, uh, thousands of dollars for your kid to go through this program. And then then they can get auditions. And I was like, what in the multi-level marketing bullshit is this i like wrote them a letter <laughs> no, it, it's and they make a ton of money and they go all around the country doing it and yeah, it and was they, wild they, and they use stars there's a star that i know that i coach uh regularly and um she was constantly being her picture was being used by this i can't even say their name because i don't want to get sued right but it's one of these big modeling companies that that train models and actors and they talk about how they you know she was a student there and then she got discovered and yada 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 and then, you know, you talk to her and she's like, yes, when I was 12, my mom took me there and blew her <laughs> on it. It was terrible. We didn't get anything from it. Yeah. But we spent a whole bunch of money and yada, yada. And then, you know, 10 years later, she becomes a star and somebody's going through the files. And, oh, look, she went there. Yeah. And, you know, and, and they, they capitalize on it. So, yeah, don't believe that stuff. Don't sign up for that stuff. You can't you won't come away with a job. You'll, you'll come away with less money. Right. I mean, even for, you know, I, actors access backstage, anything like that, where yeah. I was always on all the time. You also have to check all of that stuff more backstage, I think, but. Um, well, most of those are free, you know, backstage in, in LA, they, they get you the, the, you can see jobs on there that you can get other places too. Yes. You know, you're not getting the, the TV series that's casting co-star and roles or guest star and roles. Exactly. That's not, on, back, on backstage. That's not going to be even an actor's access for the most part, mm -hmm. not the real ones um, that the agents get. <coughs> so there's nothing, you know, there, yeah, don't, don't waste your money. There are um, some things that you spend money on when you start to work as an actor. You know, I would say actor's access in a lot of markets can be, if you have an agent though, then it shouldn't cost you anything. So you should get a free profile and the agent submits you. Um, exactly. but like IMDB pro, some people get some usage out of that. I do. Oh, that's but, right. I forgot about but, that. But it's not for everybody. It's not unless you're <laughs> going to be, but it's not unless you're going to be working in LA or trying to work in LA. Right. I, I, otherwise probably a waste of your money, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's owned by Amazon. They don't need any more money anyway. Um, uh, so, but, uh, but you have to determine that stuff for yourself, but, but those are, you know, the small 
outlays, let's say. The things you're talking about and I'm talking about, that's like in the thousands. Uh, and, and the pressure that they, that they exert on people is, is really terrible. I mean, it really is, you know. Yeah. Don't you love your kid? It's like, you know, I really need to hear that from you. you know? Yeah, no, yeah. that's... And they, they don't even use people to train them that are, you know, experienced. They exactly. just hire kids, and that's yeah. that. Yeah, so none anyway. of that. <laughs> no, and, and last thing I'll say is, if, if I don't know if people can get a hold of me through this uh, or whatever, but I mean, I'm fine with my information being out there. And um, I, I've been a, a union member, as I said, for many, many years, but I've also been on the, the National Board of Directors of SAG-AFTRA for about a dozen years. And um, I'm, I've always been very, very concerned with these kinds of things, with actors being taken advantage of, both for money as well as uh, pressure. And, and we didn't talk about intimacy, intimacy coordinators and things like that that are now normal on films that weren't just a couple of years ago. Exactly. Uh, and, and those are really important things. Um, anybody ever has a problem as far as acting stuff goes? Like, you know, you think you're being ripped off or something, please get a hold of me and let me just chat with you. And you'll, you know, you'll do whatever you do. That's your business. But I'd love to be able to give suggestions. And so I'm always available to do that. Thanks. That's very kind of you. You've really helped me. Even before you even knew me, I just pretty much gave you a cold call. And I was like, hey, I'm on Kauai. Can you uh, tell me how to become an actor? <laughs> You're like, it was I should probably be more specific. <laughs> it was more specific than that, I bet. <laughs> no, and, and by the way, it's not being me being nice. It's me actually being petty and loving to get revenge and see these companies <laughs> fail to rip off uh, actors, so yeah, yeah, and these producers well, fail to, uh, to frankly, uh, sexually abuse actors and and such. So, yeah, I mean that's also a huge thing, and God, we could just go into. I know uh, that's a whole other episode. Whole other beat. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to have you back on because I yeah. I do want to talk about all of that that's happening, everything that's happening as far as that because it's I think it's really important. It is. Um, I, agree. I agree. For anybody in the industry. Um. Yeah. Maybe when I get back to Hawaii. Yes. It's the longest I've been away in like my my whole life practically. I mean, it's been. Are you Jones in for the I'm surf? Jones, <laughs> I'm Jones in just for the just for the water. Yeah. Oddly enough, I totally believe this, and this is going to make everyone think I'm a freak and and really weird. But um, I, I mean, I was born in the '60s, right? Uh, the the ocean, I feel it when I've been away from it for too long, and I just as soon as I jump in. I feel like it changes me chemically. Me too. Like I just, I, I'm re, re, whatever, energized and, and not to be sounding really stupid, but it, it really makes me feel like I'm, I'm a new person. I'm, I'm restored. Same. So and hard. I yeah. jumped in the ocean here. It's like, it's, I did because, because I had to, because I was at the ocean. Oh my God, it was. And it was not the same. Um, not the same, no. It was yeah. not the same. No, so yeah, I got to get back to Makapu'u and yeah, Sandy yeah. Beach because I miss it like crazy. <laughs> um, but I will. I'll be there. I'll be there. Aww. I think we're we're almost done with this. We're almost done. Um. So how can people find you? They can go to scottrogers.com. Scottrogersstudios.com. And then okay. there's no D in my name. No D. Scott Rogers Studios, plural. Studios. Com. Yes. Okay. Um, or, and we should let people know you are doing online classes. Yes. Zoom classes, crazy. everything right now. I wish I should have talked about that because I, I suck at doing commercials for myself. But um, <laughs> not aside from my Hawaii class, I, I started a Portland class, but then when we went online, I opened it up to the basically the whole time zone and then even a little further. And so now this class that I teach online, uh, my SRS West class, has actors from uh, uh, I mean, LA, obviously, and, and, and Portland, and, and Seattle, and Arizona, and Salt Lake City, and Boise, Idaho, and uh, we have one from uh, Wichita, Kansas. Um, it's just wherever they happen to be, if they're serious and they want to act, it's, it's an online class. So yeah, uh, hit me up wherever you are, and uh, at, least, at least as far as Kansas. After that, you know, it gets to be three hour time difference. It's a little bit difficult for you, I know. Yeah, that's pretty radical. I like that you're bringing the masses together. It's pretty cool. I love it. I love yeah. it. Like I say, I, I love it. So it, it does more for me than anybody. I hate yeah. to say it. That doesn't sound too good, but it does. 
<laughs> thank you for having me though. Hey, thank you for coming on. I always appreciate everything you've done for me and I think you're great. Well, awesome. Thank you. I think you are too. And, <laughs> and thank you for, for thinking of me. I appreciate it. Yeah. And we'll have a, a part two again someday soon. Sure. Love to. Maybe, maybe with someone on some specific subject or yes, something. Yes. Let's do that. I would okay. love to. All right. Take care. All right. Aloha, Scott. Thank you. Aloha. You're going to disconnect me? I'll let you do that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Aloha. Bye.